see how that fits your hand just right? That's not by accident. I walked up in that old river trying to find just the right rock. Just like I didn't get married until I was 29. I had, to, I had to find just the right woman. Boy, it was a good choice. I got a good wife. She's good stuff. Otherwise, that thing's just going to be bothering me every time I go to make a fire. It's going to hurt. You know? Some people, their marriage is like that. And thankfully, mine's not. Hey, man. So, uh, alrighty. So, got my baseboard. Got my rock. I just have this here because I don't want to have a wet knee all day. It's, it's just a... You don't need to have a postal notice. Sometimes I use a leaf for that, but we're, hopefully we're going to make a coal, and we don't want it to go down on that wet ground there. And our spindle, you got one side that needs to be lubricated and one side that you want to have friction. So the lubricated side is nice when you're a teenager because teenagers have lots of facial grease, like nose grease and stuff. Kind of like rub some of that. I've got a seven-year-old that has a lot of earwax. Y'all ever get earwax? <laughs> you can get a little earwax and you can stick it down in that rock right there and look at all that earwax years of earwax in there it's like a, it makes it slippery and fast look how that's been look you can't even hear he's it. teasing it's just, it's, you can also use acorns and nuts and stuff for that because they have oil in them all right so i'm gonna pop this in here ah, just like that nice and tight I'm going to do a, something called welding. Welding is a concept we teach in martial arts where you amplify the strength of something small, like an arm, by locking it to something bigger, like your torso. So I'm going to lock my arm onto my leg right here. So now my arm is as strong as my leg. So I'm going to just see if I can get a little motion here. Now, it's kind of like a test run. I'm just going to see if it'll spin a little bit. <laughs> Once that I see that that can spin a little bit, I'm going to speed up a little bit faster and add just a little bit of pressure. Oh, look how fast that's smoking. That's about all there is to it fire is. friction. <coughs> Very good. Well, hold on. We're not done. It gets better. Now, if the wind's not blowing, you can leave that kind of unprotected like that. <coughs> now, somewhere around here... I've got some tinder. Yeah, anybody see a little ball of fuzzy looking stuff? There it is. <coughs> well, see, getting the coal is half the battle. The rest of the battle is turning that coal into a flame. And so to do that, you use something called tinder. Which is what? Uh, one of the best things in the world you can use for tinder is the inner bark of a poplar tree. Uh, but this is jute fiber because I got this giant thousand foot spool of jute and the poplar bark, you know, <laughs> is a little bit harder to come up with when you don't have a poplar tree next to you. But but you can use all sorts, any kind of fine fiber. It kind of looks like the outside of a coconut. <laughs> you could probably use that. That's really smart. You're, what are you, like some kind of kid genius? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's cool. So next time you go to the Bahamas... Get you a magnifying glass or get a little spark and see see how coconut hair works. Try that out. This guy right here is a master at surviving on coconuts and stuff. He's one of my teachers. He speared all those fish there with a thing he made out of a tire. It's the craziest thing ever. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to blow on this a little bit. so I can save it. But a lot of people say, Good all right, job. I'm here to learn how to survive. I'm going to learn how to make a fire by friction kit. And that's great. Uh, can you make a fire? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I give them three or four matches, and they can't make a fire. So what good is that right there if you can't take that and put it under something that's going to work the first time? So it's really important that people learn first how to build a fire that they can just put a little fire under, and it'll work. Because if you go to the work to make all this and to get your little flame, you stick it under there. and it, you, First of all, you got to have something to stick it under. A lot of people build their fire right on the ground, and then you can't put flame under it. And they're like, oh. So then they dig a hole, and you can put a flame under it, and they don't have the, the right... It's got to have oxygen. It's got to have airflow. It's got to have little stuff, and then medium stuff, and then big stuff. And if you do it just right, you can touch it with flame, and that fire will go right up, even after a rainstorm. 
Anybody know where the dry wood is after a rainstorm and the wood's all wet? It's been raining. Here's where they come, here's where dry wood comes from after a rainstorm. It just finished raining five minutes ago. We gotta go build a fire. Number one, the little bitty branches on the edge of our dead hemlocks that are up off the ground. They dry immediately. They're dry real quick. And if they're not dry, you can put them in your pocket or like up under your shirt and wait about 30 minutes and they'll get dry. The other place dry wood comes from right after fire is you take your knife and you skin the edge off of the branch. You skin that wet bark off and you get down to the wood underneath, a little dry dead piece of wood, and the wood underneath is dry. So you, it's a lot of work, but you have to skin that wood, and if you skin it down, you get down to where it's totally wet, and you can make shavings. You can make a big pile of dry shavings in the middle of a rainstorm by going down about that far into a branch, and the inside of that wood is real, real dry if it's a dead branch. And then you can get a fire in the middle of a rainstorm. It just takes a lot of work. Anybody have any questions about fire by friction? Good job. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. I had to show you. Yeah, people think I'm kidding when I say...